Hello everyone, today I'll be talking about a new problem about hourglass. So the problem statement reads, an hourglass is filled on the bottom and empty on the top, and it's resting on a weight scale. It is turned upside down so that all the sand is on the top and immediately placed back on the scale before any of the sand begins to fall. Draw a graph approximate of the weight that the scale displays over the course of the sand falling into the bottom half. So essentially what we're given is that the hourglass starts off something like this is this is an okay drawing. So you have sand on the bottom half, no sand on the top half. And then this hourglass is turned upside down. So that sand is now on the top half and we have no sand on the bottom half. And the sand begins to fall downwards. So that's an interesting problem because we realize that while the sand is falling down, some of the sand is no longer causing a normal force against the weight scale. So there's actually temporarily some sand that is not weighted for. So that's what's going to be making this problem very interesting. So let's draw just the top half of the hourglass. So something like this. And we have sand in here. Let's say this much. And we'll assume this hourglass is like halfway. And this is a height h. So sand will be falling for a height h and then hitting the bottom. And now we will assume that there is a scale here as given the problem statement. So this is the scale. And let's say that the sand falls out of this hole right here at a mass flow rate Q. So this is the rate at which mass comes out. Let's say it's positive. So dm over dt, where dm is a small grain of sand, the mass of a small grain of sand falling through a small time interval. And that's going to be the rate at which sand is flowing out of the top. Now we have to know that at first, at first the initial mass, say something around mg, where m is the mass of all the sand plus the frame of the hourglass. Now this is the initial weight, but the moment that this grain of sand begins to fall, the rate at which sand comes out is going to be q in terms of the mass. Well, q times g if we we're going to do the rate at which weight comes out. And now it starts to come out at this rate. So this is a constant rate. Q is constant. And this rate is constant and the mass keeps decreasing with the time. So the mass now looks like this. Um, we'll just do mass for now. M minus Q times T, where T is some time greater than or equal to zero. Now, this, this happens until the first grain of sand falls and then hits this bottom scale. Because what happens when the grain of sand hits the bottom scale is that its momentum is suddenly stopped. It has a velocity and it suddenly stops, so we know there's an impulse that happens. And remember, impulse is the change in momentum. So we're eager to find out what the momentum of this grain of sand is when it hits the bottom. Before you do that, let's find out what the t is that is required for this to happen. So let's call that t0. t0 is the time the first grain of sand starts and then falls. So we know that t0, the time for this first section, t0, should be equal to square root of 2h over g. And this is from kinematics. Now, given this, we know that by the time this happens, the velocity of this bottom grain of sand is equal to, well, let's find some space. Over here, the velocity of the bottom grain of sand is equal to our gravitational acceleration multiplied by t0. And that means that the change of momentum, because it goes from this velocity to at rest, is equal to dm is the mass of that small grain of sand multiplied by this velocity, g t0. Now, let's move this down a bit. Now, we know that this impulse has a relation to force because we know that force, F, is equal to our impulse over a change in time. In this case, this is an infinitely small impulse, so write it as dp. And change in time for an infinitely small period of time, it's going to be, let's undo that, it should be dp over dt. Now we know this, dp is equal to this, so we'll put this in and we get gt0 times 
dm over dt. And we actually know this expression is equal to our mass flow rate. So this is just equal to Q. So instead, we can write that the force this small grain of sand impacting the bottom gives is equal to QGT0. Now, that's very interesting because what is our mass that we have decreasing up to this point? Remember, our mass becomes M minus Q, and then T becomes T0 at this time. And let's multiply by G to give our weight. So mass times G is going to be Mg minus Qg T0 at the moment that the first grain of sand hits the bottom. And at this moment, something special occurs because this force, let's redraw our, our glass on this diagram, the force of that grain of sand hitting the bottom right here, the force is going to be equal to the missing weight out of our original mass that is of the sand that is still in the air. So remember, this sand in the air has weight QGT0, but that weight, which is not calculated with the rest of the weight here, is contributed by this grain of sand in the bottom, which has an impulsive force of QGT0. So in the end, the mass scale is missing out on this, these pieces of sand, but that is re-contributed by this falling piece. So the total weight that the scale weighs, the scale weighs is going to be equal to the original mass minus QGT0 plus QTG0, which is going to be equal to the original mass Mg. So this is going to keep happening as the sand just falls down. And we'll assume that it doesn't raise into like a hill shape, which is it's just a constant height h. So as this happens, this will continuously, there'll be a sand hitting the bottom, contributing this force, and the sand in the air is accounted for by this. So this keeps happening until the height of the sand in the hourglass completely drops to zero. Remember, as this happens, air is essentially taking over, and eventually, as the last grains of sand fall, not all of this space anymore will be occupied by sand. Perhaps this part will be air. And because this part is now air, the weight which is missing out of the total accounted weight will no longer be QGT0. So remember, this is after the last sand falls. After the last sand falls, there's now air here, and not all of this is QGT0. In fact, this will be a linearly decreasing amount of mass in this, because now Q is no longer contributing to the missing mass. And thus, we know that this is also a linearly decreasing, or increasing, this is a decreasing weight here, and an increasing weight on the scale, because this force is still being added on to the weight, but there's no longer as much of a missing mass in the air. So now we can actually draw a graph. We've been given a couple nice results, and let's draw our graph somewhere here. So under the axis, this will be time. And this will be our weight. So what happens is we start at a perhaps a weight mg, and this is zero. So we start at mg, but we know that immediately the weight begins to drop as the sand begins to fall. And this is a linear drop because the slope is constant. And this will keep dropping until a time t0 equals the square root of 2h over g. And this mass at this point will be mg minus qgt0. And however, at this moment, the first sand hits the bottom, as you can remember. So the weight jumps all the way back up to mg. And it continues at mg until the last grain of sand falls from the top half. And in that case, it starts rising at a constant slope. And it'll rise up to a certain point until the last grain of sand hits the bottom and it'll go back to being mg. And this weight comes out to be the exact symmetric opposite plus qg t0. And we have the time over here that elapses. The total time it takes for the entire thing to drop out is t. This will be t minus t0. And then this will be our graph of the weight on the scale.
And so, what are the key takeaways from this problem? This, this is a very interesting problem. So, let's write some details on what we've learned. So, a very important concept to note is that even though there might be a small mass, there still might be an impulse from that small mass if it's continuous. If there's a flow or any sort of action of this sort, there might be an impulse and we have to consider that. If we did not consider the force that this dropping sand has on the scale, we'd have a wrong answer here. Another thing to keep in mind is that sometimes you don't always need to make things complicated. You can define variables. Like we defined a mass flow rate Q equals dm over dt. This made things simplified. And we also didn't always use the exact value of t0. Sometimes we just wrote things as t0 and they happen to work out. And that's about it. So thank you for watching today's video. And if you have any problems you'd like me to go over, you can leave that in the comment section below. Thank you.